Good morning, Movement Church. How are y'all doing today? All right, all right. Love that energy. Hey, it is great to be with you here this morning. Uh, it's great to be with those of you that are joining us online. Thank you for joining us that way. want to welcome you. If, uh, if you are new here, if you, uh, or maybe you've only come a few times, and we haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, uh, my name is Dwayne. I'm one of the pastors here, and I uh, hope that I'm not the first to welcome you, but glad that I can welcome you today would invite you, if you're new, hopefully you had a chance to stop by our welcome desk and pick up one of those great blue bags. We have some things in there that we'd love to put in your hands. And also would invite you, if you have not yet, uh, to text the words NEW to MC to the number 94000. That would give us an opportunity to connect with you. We promise not to be weird about it uh, or overbearing, but we'd love to connect with you and answer any questions you might have and get to know you a little bit. So we would invite you to do that. And also for you veterans, I would say, of course, continue to, uh, to remember that compelling faith and invite others to come and see what God's doing here at Movement Church and also go and tell people about the reason that you have hope in Jesus. And when you do so, make sure that you use our display wall out there, but use uh, the little blue ping pong balls and the white ping pong balls when you have conversations with folks and drop them in that display. Hey, and then I have a question for you guys. How many of you in here, I'm curious, by show of hands, have the Church Center app on your phone? Hold your hand up, way up high. All right, awesome. Keep your hand up for just a minute. If you do not have your hand up, I would invite you to download the app, Church Center. And if you need help with that, check with one of these people whose hand's up. You can put your hands down now. But check with one of those folks who have their hand up. We would love to be able to communicate with you better. There's lots of information there about groups and services, any next steps you might want to take. We would invite you to do that. The Church Center app, very, very helpful. With that, let's stand up together this morning. We are going to worship our King together. Amen? Amen.
So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I you to have a seat for just a moment while we continue this time of worship with your opportunity to give this morning. And as we do, one of the things I wanted to highlight today during this time was missions. And we are part of the Christian and Missionary Alliance after all. And uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was kind of remind everyone here, as I have to remind myself sometimes, we think of missions and often we think of, you know, across the globe, on the other side of the world. And when we do that, we're correct. But we also sometimes forget that missions happen right here in our neighborhood, right here in this area. And so I wanted to highlight both of those things today and tell you first about one of those local opportunities uh, in, our, in one of our impact partners. We have several impact partners around the community that we partner with strategically. One of those is Child Evangelism Fellowship. I'll say CEF from now on, because I can only say that one, for one time without messing it up. But CEF uh, is an amazing organization. And last school year alone in our area in Southwest Florida, uh, CEF saw 242 elementary school children come to know uh, Jesus as their savior. Woo! Amen. Over the summer, right here in Charlotte County, there, there are five-day clubs that they held over the summer. 22 more students came to know Jesus, which was an amazing thing. And for the first time this school year, for the first time ever, there are either already are or will be very, very soon good news clubs in all 10 elementary schools in Charlotte County. Amen. And one important thing to remember is that a lot of that happens because of the extravagant generosity and the selfless service that happens from a lot of you in this building right now. In fact, if you look around, you'll see some folks today with their Good News Club t-shirts on. You'll see a table in the back where there's some donations for those Good News Clubs if you want to participate in that. Amazing. I want to talk to you about, though, our international missions. We have our IPs, our impact partners, and we have our IWs, our international workers. You need to know that every time that you give to Movement Church, you're supporting the Great Commission Fund of the Christian Missionary Alliance, which helps fund all of our international workers. But there are some that we strategically partner with, some that are near and dear to us. One of those couples is Jonathan and Katie Finkbinder and their little, their little guy, MJ. And instead of me telling you about them, uh, they wanted to give you some information themselves. So we have a video. I'd like you to check this out and hear from Jonathan and Katie right here in ministry. And so thank you for that extravagant generosity. We're going to continue to support that family as they go out and reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. So you get to be a part of that through your giving. You can do that several different ways. There's some instructions uh, behind me on the screen there. You can give online or texting. If you like the old-fashioned way, there's some envelopes on the seats in front of you. You can drop those gifts in the corner boxes of our foyer there on your way out today. Um, and in, in just a moment, I'm going to pray over those gifts. But we're going to do something a little bit different today that I wanted to share with you. As we're kind of highlighting these missionary partners, I want to invite you to, in addition to your extravagant generosity, invite you to pray for these impact partners. And the way that we're going to do that is that during this next song, I'm going to invite you to come up, if you like, and all across the wings of the stage and right here on the altar, there are some cards here and they have prayer needs, specific requests from CEF and from Jonathan and, and Katie, things that you can pray for. I'm going to invite you to come. You can come. You can pray right here at the altar for them. You can take it back to your seat and pray if you'd like. But I would invite you all during this next song, come and get one of these so that you can be praying for them. There are also, also some practical next steps that you can take on the back. Okay. 
So let's pray over that and we'll continue our worship time together. Father, we thank you that we get to be a part of what you're doing around Charlotte County, surrounding areas, and all throughout the world. God, that we get to be your plan A to reach the lost. God, we pray that you would be glorified in it, Lord. We pray that these gifts would be used in mighty and powerful ways beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. God, that you would be glorified in it. Thank you that we are a part of this movement, helping others know Jesus, love others, and live changed. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up and continue our worship time together. If the rocks try out in silence 
So, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you, God of the universe, creator of all things, as your word says, that while we were still yet sinners, that you still sent your son, Jesus, to die for us. That while we were unworthy of that love, your love, unabounding and limitless, covers us. And so, Lord, I thank you for these truths that we can hold on to from your word, and we pray this in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, and God's people said, amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for leading us. Yeah, you can go ahead, give God some praise this morning. Absolutely. How reassuring to come into his presence and to know that he is the one who never leaves the one behind today. Amen? Amen. Well, today we are continuing in a series that we've been in for the past several weeks. Uh, This is our next to last. We'll wrap up next week. But a series entitled Renewed, uh, based on Romans chapter 12 that speaks of the renewing of our minds. And this whole teaching series has been a journey through a scripturally grounded, spirit-led look at God and our mental health. 
So our hope is that it's been encouraging to you and it's helped you to see how God really does care about the whole person, the whole self. And that's really been our intent and our heart in this. So my hope is that uh, for most of you, you at least know kind of where we are in this series. If you are a guest, if this is your first time at Movement Church, we want to say a big welcome to you. We're glad that you're here with us. We're thrilled that you could be here. Uh, would invite you, even encourage you to maybe catch up online. You can find us online and, and check out some of the previous week's teachings on that. But today, we're going to just jump right back in. And to do it, let's start with... Uh, a survey. How does that sound to everybody? Y'all want to do a survey this morning? Whether you want to or not, uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm, I'm not, hear me, I'm not calling you a warrior today. That's not my intention here, but I do want to ask you this question. So before you, you're afraid to answer it and you're like, I'm not putting my hand up because I've already read the notes and I already know where he's going and I don't feel like being judged this morning. <laughs> not calling you a worry, warrior. I'm just asking how many of you worried about something this past week? Raise your hand. Raise them real high. You online, join with us. Go ahead and throw up a hand or something. Now, now hold on. Put your hand back up. I want you to look around. Okay? Now, I want you to just say, I guess I'm not alone. Okay? Let's, let's start there. But... Uh, I want to ask you to go ahead and, uh, like I said, let's just do a survey. Let's just dive in. Uh, you're not a worrier, but you worried about something this week. What did you worry about this week? Somebody said finances. Yeah. Yes, this is an interactive portion of today's message. So uh, anybody else? Health. health. Somebody said health. Anybody else? Kids, children. I heard that one. Okay. Anybody else? Work, job, yep, there's one. Um, have, did anybody watch the debate? <laughs> Election. Um, yeah, I'm an equal opportunity offender. It was just, yeah. Um, may, maybe, maybe yours was just uh, going out, you know? Maybe it was, maybe it was public spaces kind of got you unnerved this week. Anything else that you want to shout out while we're going? Relationships. Ooh, <laughs> that's not touchy at all, is it? Relationships. I'm just going to scribble that for the sake of time. Anything else? One more. Life. Hey, you just made my message a whole lot easier. <laughs> so here's the thing. We all experience some measure of worry right? It's natural. It's part of the human experience. In fact, this is backed up by science, by data. Uh, there was actually a study that was done in 2020, I believe it was, a study that was conducted over the period of 30 days several different times. So they would take 30-day chunks and they would keep kind of recycling through this study. And in that study, what was discovered is that the average person reported three to four testable worries per day, all right? That means the average person had three to four things that they worried about in a given day. And when we say testable, what we're referring to is things that could, after a short period of time, be looked back on and say, did that happen? What did happen? That's what we mean by testable, okay? So uh, I'm afraid I'm going to fail the exam, right? I'm, I'm afraid of what the, the doctor is going to say after the physical or after that blood work that I had done. I'm uh, worried that I won't get that job or that opportunity. That's what they meant by testable worries, okay? Average person, three to four of those per day. Now, here's the thing that we want to start with, because it's important that we're able to kind of separate these two out just a little bit as we go where we're going today. And that is that when we look at that, that spectrum of emotional experience that we've been looking at the past couple of weeks, as we look at that on this end, we can see worry, or if you're more comfortable, you can use the word concern, all right? Worry and concern those can both serve as a tool given by God to alert us. There's nothing wrong, hear me, there's nothing wrong with having concern for your kids. 
There's nothing wrong with having concern for your future. There's nothing wrong with having a concern uh, for your marriage or uh, a given situation that you might be going through. Those can serve as a tool to alert us, again, to an area that needs attention in our lives. Listen, worry and concern can serve as a tool to actually alert us to danger, right? I'm a little worried about this. That might be that God has given that to you to say, this, this might not be the best situation. This might be something that you need to pull away from. Or I'll even say this. We'll see this in a moment. But concern can be a motivating force for us if handled in a healthy manner. It can be something that we say, well, I was, I'm worried about that test. Well, the, the concern can drive you to do your best, to try your best, to give your best effort. The challenge arises when what is a common concern, a common worry, becomes constant, becomes consistent, and eventually becomes crippling. And that's when worry becomes anxiety. There's nothing wrong with you saying, I have a concern about. But when the concern becomes consistent and constant and eventually crippling, that's when anxiety has found its root, has taken a hold. And hear me when I say this, this is a real issue. So much so that Dr. Chris Adams, we mentioned him a couple weeks ago. You may remember he's a, a doctor, professor at Biola University. He is also uh, the head, the lead of one of the leading institutions on mental health and the church, a solid Christ follower. He shares this. Anxiety has now eclipsed depression as the number one mental health issue in America. The number one mental health issue in America, including all sorts of things. It affects 18% of the population. It includes all sorts of things ranging from panic disorder to social anxiety to generalized anxiety disorder is what this one, to phobias, fears that we have. It is the number one issue. It is real. We can't just dismiss it, especially as the church. Because here's the thing, as real as it is, Jesus is here to heal and to help. And that's what we're going to see today as we go to Matthew chapter 6. If you've got a Bible with you here or online, turn with us to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to a passage that's fairly familiar to some, maybe more uh, than others, but Matthew chapter 6 And we're going to start in verse 25. We're going to read a couple of the verses, but I encourage you to read this whole section at some point throughout the course of the next few days. Matthew 6, 25. When you got it, say got it, Nate. If you don't, no problem. It'll be right here on the screen. Look at this. Therefore, I tell you, we'll get back to that in a moment. Do not be anxious about your life. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Cracker Barrel. No, 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 no. He doesn't stop there. Jesus says to these gathered at this Sermon on the Mount, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you? By being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life. Then he goes on to talk about how God clothes the lilies of the field in splendor. He goes on to talk about how he clothes the grass of the field that today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace. And then he says this, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Now, before we start, we've got to reintroduce the statement we've used every single week. That some of you already have filled in by now. And it's this. It is not our intention 
to try to answer every question, but to start a conversation, the foundation of which is God. Okay? So we're not going to talk about the fullness of anxiety and everything that comes with it and every particular uh, anxiety disorder that exists and, and, and the plethora of ways under the leadership and the prompting of a holy, omnipotent God that you can get all of this help. We're not answering every single question. We just want to start a conversation. The foundation of which is God. As today we discuss when anxiety overwhelms us. When anxiety overwhelms us, when the worry, the common concern, drifts to consistent, then constant, then crippling. What do we do when anxiety overwhelms? So, our hope today is to give you four statements, four simple phrases that will bring you back to this passage and back to the hope that is found only in Jesus Christ as we walk through this. These four statements are not just, you know, little mantras for you to say in front of the mirror so that you can be reminded that you're smart enough and you're good enough and doggone it, people like you. That's not what we're going for here, all right? These statements are rooted in Scripture, more specifically, the words of Jesus Christ so that we can be brought back to this. And the first one is this. When anxiety overwhelms, we need to remember life means more. Life is more. I love, thank you, whoever said, what were you worried about this week? Life. Right? right? When anxiety overwhelms us, life means more. Look at what Jesus says. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Now, I want to pause here because you know that phrase we've been using every week? It's not our intention to answer every question, but to start a conversation. Just so you know, that came from Jesus. He's not speaking to every single area of worry in your life in this sentence. You know why? Because if he did, the Sermon on the Mount would take up about 472 pages in our Bible, and that would be all there is. But just because, hear me, just because Jesus didn't speak specifically to the thing that causes you worry or eventually anxiety does not mean it wasn't on his heart as he spoke these words. So even if, well, I'm not worried about what I'm eating or what I'm drinking or what I'm wearing, but I'm worried about this relationship. I'm worried about my kids. I'm worried about going into public spaces because it, it's something, it does something to me and I don't like. Just because he didn't talk about it here doesn't mean it wasn't on his heart and his mind. He's here to start a conversation. Don't worry about these things. Is not life more? Now, in the Hill household, uh, we had one who graduated several years ago, is off living the adult life, doing his thing. Uh, but we've got two more that are in the throes of high school. Uh, we, of course, took the obligatory first day of school pick that you are required to take if you have children and to post on social media. You know, there are people in the world who just really don't care. And yet we keep posting it every single year, don't we? So uh, this was their first day of school this year. Uh, both of them started in the 10th grade. Uh, and they also started taking their first college classes. Uh, Y'all think I'm joking when I talk about how dumb I feel sitting around our dinner table. When you're sitting with a 14-year-old who's taking trigonometry, you just don't. You just hush. That's how I feel. I just feel like a knucklehead most of the time. But anyway, our kids, they have always been ones to thrive academically. They're very proud of their academic accomplishments and should be well-earned, well-deserved. But they are overachievers. Do we have any overachievers in the room right now? Some of y'all aren't willing to answer because you're afraid you're going to be judged. <laughs> Don't let anxiety get you, friend. <laughs> right? Let me put it this way. Do we have any people in the room that you got a 96, but you felt you deserved a 100? There it is. Now we found you. Now we found you. Now, some of you in the room, like, if you get a 96, you're... Woo-hoo! Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Let's be real. Some of y'all, you got a 70. You're like, yeah, man. I'm not getting grounded this weekend. Right? 
But some of us, different people, different experiences, different spaces, it's all good. It's fine wherever you are. But, but my kids, there have been occasions where we've had a conversation with them and we've had to say, you know, they've come home and, man, I didn't get a good grade on that. And like, what did you get? And they'll tell us. And I'm, I don't want to make it too awkward, but it's the kind of grade that some of you would be like. <laughs> uh, and we'll just be like, come on, that's a great grade. And they're like, yeah, you know, I didn't do great on it. And then we'll say, well, what was it? Well, it was a quiz. We're like, okay, it was a quiz. What does it count for? Oh, like point zero 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 five percent of my grade. <laughs> and we're sitting there like, are you serious right now? It's okay. The class is more than that one grade, than that one assessment. Your, your school career, you know, they've been told by counselors, now you're taking college classes, so it counts now. And so like they're oh, you know, hey, take a breath, calm down, because the class is more. Listen, that's what Jesus is doing in this moment. In this moment, he is saying to everyone listening, he's saying to each of us today, hey, life is more than whatever has you gripped with anxiety right now. I love it when Jesus says or does something that we somehow think is a new idea. You know what I'm talking about? In, this, in this, this situation, what Jesus is doing is, is fascinating because uh, Jesus was really the, the OG, the original cognitive behavioral therapist. He was. And some of you who are in that field, you're like, yep, that's it. That's what's going on here. Some of you are like, I don't know what he just said, but he probably fought over 97s instead of 100s when he was in school. I, no, I really didn't. Maybe I did. But here's the thing. Cognitive behavioral therapy, like it's something that's... I wouldn't say it's new, but it is newer in the field of psychology. And here's what's fascinating. The whole point of that practice, those who do it, is that they want to guide people through exercises that help them see when they are perhaps misinterpreting some events or situations. The whole purpose of cognitive behavioral therapy is to help people discover when maybe they're overstating difficulties or or maybe making assumptions that aren't really reasonable. And it offers a way for people to respond to those anxiety-provoking situations. You hear it? Jesus says, don't worry about this, don't worry about this, don't worry about this. He says, is life not more? He's trying to say, quite simply, hey, I'm not being dismissive here. This isn't Jesus just going, uh, yeah, if you're worried about some stuff, just stop it. Just, oh, please, just stop. What you're going through is not that big of a deal. It's not that important. And I'm going to be honest with you. In a culture where at times there's been a misunderstanding of what anxiety really is, some of us have drifted towards being dismissive. That as soon as someone brings up, man, I'm feeling anxious about this. I'm really struggling with this. They're like, oh, suck it up, buttercup. Right? That's a repeating theme throughout this series. I don't know if you've caught that. But we're, we're like, oh, get over yourself. That is not a big deal. And, and we maybe even start getting into comparative analysis. Right? They're like, I'm just really worried about this. And you're like, oh, that's nothing when I was a kid. And, and so what we do is we dismiss. But notice that's not what Jesus was saying here. What he was saying is this, I recognize that the word you have is real, but don't forget to place it in the grander scheme of life and eternity. Don't forget to put what you're facing, what has you so gripped. He's seeking to realign our perspective so that when worry morphs into anxiety and seeks to engulf us, that we don't just sit there and say, well, I'll just just suck it up. Everything's fine. No. Deal with it. Address it. Figure out what's really causing it. Get to the root of where, where is this worry that has now become anxiety? Where is it coming from? And then in solid community with other trusted Christ followers, with with great counselors and pastors and and trusted loved ones, work through that as Jesus seeks to put that thing that's causing you anxiety back into a larger perspective, right? That's what he's driving at here. Now, hear me. Will that solve it and just make it go away? No. No. 
Because the reality is some of the things that have you worried and concerned, they're a big deal. But if we can pause to frame it properly, we can get an understanding that life means more, even more that eternity means more. No matter how weighty or difficult this is. Which brings us to the second thing Jesus shows us. When anxiety overwhelms, life means more. And secondly, I'm worth more. Say, Nate, what do you mean, I'm worth more? Well, Jesus clarifies it for us. We'll look at verse 26, but you also see this in 28 and in 30. But in verse 26, look at what Jesus says. He says, don't be anxious about your life. What you'll eat, what you'll drink, your body, what you'll put on is life, not more. Life is more. Then he says this. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So Jesus addresses kind of this common picture of what weighs heavy on us, what what causes worry to drift to anxiety. And he says, life is more than that. And then he goes into this. He says, look at the birds. For me, it's still a weird transition. It's still, still kind of a bro, what moment? You know what I mean? Don't worry about things. Look at the birds. What? Look at the birds. And so he says, look at the birds. But he goes on and says that they don't store up. They don't gather. They don't, they don't sow anything so that they can reap it and put it into barns. And listen, some of you, the real analytical types, you hear this and you're like, yeah, but squirrels do. <laughs> what about the beaver? Like you're just, <laughs> it's like, some of y'all got that. Uh, some of you, as soon as you read this, you're like, yeah, but I've seen squirrels that gather nuts and they hoard them away. Again, Jesus is starting a conversation, not answering every question. He's trying to get us to the point that, hey, those things, Things that consume us, Jesus sees them. He tends to them. He cares for them. But what's fascinating is what he says after he presents that. Are you not of more value? Are you not of more diafer ata? Diafer ata. The root word there for value is diafero. It literally translates to differ, to excel, to surpass another. Jesus is saying, you are of surpassing importance to the Father. You are different from the birds and the grass and the lilies. You excel beyond them. And I want you to see that and to understand that. Then in the totality of life and creation, God has his eyes on you and has prioritized you. That should cause something inside of us to both settle and get really excited at the same time. I think of it this way, when we moved to Florida several years ago uh, and we're headed down here, I shared this illustration. We actually looked at this passage briefly almost exactly two years ago after one of the most terrifying experiences of many of our lives as Ian came through here. But I can remember before all that, before we even moved to Florida, we had heard the stories of the big storms and, uh, and the flood. And let's just face it. We, we live in Florida, which is just one massive floodplain waiting to happen. Amen. Like Florida is just land waiting on water. It's paradise until it rains too much. But I can remember we heard all of these stories. And so when we moved here, we did something. We had always uh, kept all of our valuable documents, our wedding photos, our kids' first photos as babies, that kind of stuff. Um, Important documents like insurance policies for the house, life insurance policy, all that stuff. We'd always kept it in a safe. But when we moved here, we realized we needed to have a different mindset. And so we got one of these. Do any of you have one of these right here? A go bag? Do you have these? Product placement. Get you one if you don't have one. Uh, but anyway, th this go bag now contains, this single bag contains the things of the most importance to us in this life. 
those same documents, uh, a couple of hard drives that are in side of this bag that we keep inside. And before some of you get smart and like, this numbskull brought all that stuff and has it there for somebody to steal. It's got commentary books in it for illustration purposes. But this is where that stuff normally stays. And it's got, it's got this fantastic Velcro cover. Uh, it's fireproof. It is waterproof. It's got a double zipper system. And all of our stuff stays inside of not just this, but another Pack it inside that drops into here. The whole point is this. There are things in my house that I really love, that I really like. There are pictures of my kids on beautiful canvases that hang on the wall. There's a picture of my, my, my bride in her bridal gown in this beautiful gold frame that we keep. There, there are love letters between the two of us when we were younger. Ooh. There are, there are pictures that abound in albums, all of this stuff. There are things that I love. I've got a couch. I've got a recliner couch that has a cup holder that when I stick, mm-hmm, you feel that. You know what I'm doing this afternoon. Uh, that, that when I put my cup filled with ice, it has an insulated rim to it, so it keeps my cup cold. Did I love that thing. But if a storm comes, this is what I'm going for. I, I, I really, really like that couch. I do. I really love those pictures. I love that picture of my bride. But if a storm comes, we've chosen what we prioritize. This is what goes out the door. This is what excels. This is what surpasses. This is what differs from everything else in that house. It doesn't mean that anything else in the house is not valuable to me. To me, it means that that is the most valuable. And I'll take it a step further. If we're in a state of emergency that doesn't give us days or, 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 or hours or even minutes, but seconds, I can promise you the first thing I'm going to do is tend to this small crowd of people that sit on this front row every single Sunday. They're going to be the ones that I make sure attended to and taken care of. Does it mean all of that other stuff is not valuable? All those other things, all those other memories? No. But they excel. They differ. That's what Jesus is saying about you. So I don't want you to get offended if you're like, he's saying that God doesn't love the bunny rabbits. (laughs) Hear me. God values all of his creation. But do not be confused. He values you most. And so when anxiety comes into our lives and tries to cripple us, we need to remember life is more. But we also need to remember I'm worth more. I used this phrase a couple of years ago, introduced it to you for the first time. It is a mantra around our house. Maybe you weren't here for it a couple of years ago. You can enjoy it today. And it is this right here. God loves me more than a bird. That's a bird that I took a picture of right out on Fisherman's Village right there. He's beautiful, wonderful. God takes care of him, but God loves me more than him. You say, that's silly, that's goofy. It is, but you're not going to forget it. You're not going to forget in that moment when your kids feel like they've gone off the rails and you don't know what to do and you don't know how to help them and you're trying to figure out what am I going to do to make this right? How am I going to do to set that? What am I going to do to set things back in motion? In that moment when anxiety tries to make its way into your heart, you're not going to forget, God loves me more than a bird. I'm worth more than this anxiety that's trying to cripple me. When you walk into that doctor's office, and you've been waiting on the results from the blood test for several days. And the doctor says the worst thing you could possibly hear. And all you can think is, what am I going to do? How am I going to tell my wife, my husband? How am I going to tell my kids? How much time? You're not going to forget. God loves you more than a bird. And no matter how weighty it may seem, he has you. And for some of us in this room, that is the most challenging part of today's message to accept. 
You know why? Because going back to last week, some of you are still bound, chained, gripped by a shame value that has convinced you that there is no way God could love you so much that he actually wants to tend to the worries and the concerns of your life because of something you did, because of something that was done to you, because of something that was said about you or over you. And today, Jesus wants to free you from that. He wants you to hear, you are worth more. Which takes us to our third statement. When anxiety overwhelms, the cost is too great. Don't choose to place your trust in the brokenness more than the promises of God. Because the cost is too great. How many of you, catch this, look at this. Verse 27, Jesus makes it really plain. Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? I just wanted to see, because, I mean, the reality is, if you could do the inverse of this, some of us would be 397 years old. (laughs) Right? Which of you can add a single hour to his span of life? How many of you have ever worried about something a test, a work project, a relationship, something you said, something you did, uh, a diagnosis. How many of you have ever worried about something so much that it actually ruined your entire day? Anybody? Look around. Stick your hands up. Stick your hands up. Look around. You're not alone. Okay? We've all gotten so torn up that the worry turned into anxiety, right? Right? The worry is, man, I don't think I did well on that test. Moving on. The anxiety is, I don't think I did well on this test. I think it's going to be a problem. I think this is going to screw up my whole day. I think this is going to screw up my high school career. I think this, I'm going to fail. I'm going to drop out. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to live in a van down by the river. I'm not sure what's going to happen with my life. Right? <laughs> and here's a kicker. How many of you have done that? And then you you worried about something so much it ruined your day only to find out nothing came of it. You ever done that? That's the best, isn't it? Just shot holes like Swiss cheese all through your day. And then you get to it and you find out they, they weren't upset by what you said. You did fine on the test. The diagnosis wasn't what you thought it was going to be. Everything worked out. Listen, again, scientific studies back this up. Go back to our one from the beginning. You remember that study out of Penn State? that it was three to four testable worries per day. Here's what's fascinating. In that study, after they did this every single time, it was found after 30 days, 91% of the concerns were false alarms. You mean 91% of the time nothing even happened? Man, I'm worried I worried too much. right? The remaining 9% of worries that came about, the outcome was actually better than expected a third of the time. So, So what are we saying here? When worry drifts to anxiety, it's completely unproductive because the vast majority, hear, hear me, take just the science Remove it from what Jesus just said. Which of you can even add a single hour to your life? Just remove that. Let's just look at the science for a second. Most of the time, it's not going to matter. Now, I'm not saying this to be logical and to try and convince you with logic, but hopefully this will get us to see, wow, the cost is too great for me to let anxiety grip me over this. That This can't be the case. That's what we're seeing here. It's not just unproductive, it's counterproductive. The very word in the Greek language, the very word in the Greek for anxiety, for anxious, merimnapo, comes from two separate words. Merizo is the first one there in your notes. Merizo means to divide, to separate, to tear apart. Okay? Merizo. That's the first part of the word. The second part of the word is noose. Maybe you remember that from our first week. 
out of Romans chapter 12, where he says, therefore be transformed by the renewing of your noose. What is noose? Mind. So it is that which includes the faculties of perception and judgment, feeling, judging, determining. Jesus says, don't be divided in your mind. Don't be torn apart in your feeling, in your judging, in your determining. That's what anxiety is literally doing. Can you please raise your hands if you have ever worried about so much, something so much, that's how you felt. Torn apart, ripped at the seams, confusion abounding, your heart broken because you were just left going, I, I don't know what to do with all of this. That's what anxiety is. It's the dividing of our whole self. And here's what's wild. It's no coincidence that right before this, Jesus, first of all, is talking about money. That doesn't cause anybody anxiety, does it? He's talking about money, and he says these words. No one can serve two masters. He can't be divided. He will love the one and hate the other, or hate the one and love the other. And then right out of that, he says, don't be divided in your mind, in your feelings, in your judgment, in your determining. So he was talking about money right before that, and now he's referring to time. Which one of you can add one hour to your life? He's saying to us, not only was it unproductive, you lost that hour because it was tearing apart at you. Your affection and your attention and your energy divided. It literally weighs down on us. We don't even need an illustration or a word picture. You see it right in Proverbs 12. The wisest man to ever live, Solomon said, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. Literal translation would be to stoop down, to bend down, to press down. That divided mind bends us, breaks us. That divided self and it costs us too much. In a 2023 study just this past year, listen to this, 72,000 participants. In that study, researchers and medicals, medical professionals found this. Listen, individuals with anxiety symptoms experience significantly lower quality of life, higher direct medical costs, higher indirect costs than individuals who do not have anxiety symptoms, including things like high blood pressure, heart trouble, migraines, thyroid issues, stomach disorders. And some of you are like, great, Nate, now I have something else to worry about. <laughs> right? Hear me. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Don't you let that anxiety get a hold of you. But know that the cost is too great. Know that it's too much. Jesus is saying to you today, in this very passage in Matthew chapter 6, he is saying to us, I don't want you to lose the time that you have. I don't want you to be a mind and heart and soul divided. I don't want you to be stooped over. Why? Because he has something better. When anxiety overwhelms, life means more, I'm worth more, the cost is too great, and God has something better. That's why he concludes this by saying in verse 33, but seek first. Everybody say those two words with me. But seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. He says, look to me. Move your mind's attention and your heart's affection from those things that are trying to keep you crippled with worry. Just take one shift and fix your eyes on me. Fix your eyes on what I desire for your life, how I want you to watch, to, to walk and watch how it is that I intervene. Now, does that mean he'll meet the, the deepest desires of your heart. Listen, this does not mean when Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. It is not seek God first and then I'll have a lovely beachfront home on Boca Grande and millions of dollars in the bank. That is not what that means. But it does mean in the same way 
that he ensures that the birds of the air are fed in the same way that it, that it is he who ensures that the lilies of the field are adorned with splendor. He will take care of you. He will take care of that thing that's seeking to grip your heart. More importantly than the things, he'll tend to you. That's why Paul continues this discussion as he writes to the church at Philippi and Philippians. And he says, do not be anxious about anything. There it is again. Don't, don't, don't live in a state of being torn apart. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Do you see it? Don't be anxious. Seek God first. Go to him first. The moment that you feel that anxiety creeping in, go to him. Trust in him. Trust in the valued voices and opinions of those that God has surrounded you with to say, hey, God's got you. Don't dismiss it. Seek first. Don't be anxious. And he continues by saying this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we seek him, he dispatches peace. And we're not just talking, listen, we're not just talking about some some passing peace. We're talking about a peace that in the bleakest of situations is referred to as a peace that passes all understanding. Meaning that others will look at your life and say, how are you okay with all that's going on? And that you get to go, Jesus. How can you walk through this? This is terrifying. Jesus. Friend, you couldn't, you couldn't leave the house five, ten years ago. How is it you're able now to go out in, in public and be around others? It's hard, but Jesus. It, it surpasses understanding. And here's what I love. It says that he gives that peace to guard your hearts and your minds, right? To guard your hearts and your minds. Now we hear that and oftentimes we, we process that and we're like, oh, that's amazing. I just love that. So and in the place of anxiety, he just brings me comfort and he just you know, surrounds me with his presence and it's just so comforting and, and everything's good. And that's good, amen? amen? That's powerful. That's beautiful. But, but I want you to catch something that's really neat about this because he says the peace of God will guard your hearts. When he talks about that guarding, it's not just, oh, it's comfortable, and he hugs you, and it's just a warm embrace, and oh, Jesus, I love you, and you love me, and everything's going to be okay. No, 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 catch this. In the Greek language, that word guard literally translates to refer to a sentinel, a watchman, a military guard. All right. Question. When worry starts drifting to anxiety in your life and anxiety starts coming full force at your mind and your heart, an enemy to attack you, to tear you apart, right? Question, do you want a warm hug? Or, or how about this? Well, we've been so blessed this year. Uh, We have had some of the fine officers, men and women, from Charlotte County sheriffs who have been right here on our campus making sure we're safe along with an amazing security team looking out for all of you, right? Uh, Many of you have gotten to know Mario. Mario's fantastic. We love that guy. He signs up every chance he gets. Today we've got John out there. How many of y'all saw John when you came in this morning? A few of you? Yeah, let me show you John. Uh, I think they actually took a picture of him that they're going to throw up here on the screen in case you missed it. If y'all got it, just there's John. Yeah, let me tell you something. That's John trying to smile. (laughs) I met John this morning. I walked up. I said, man, thank you for being here. He shook my hand. And I was going to ask him a follow-up question, but I changed my mind. (laughs) And I mean that in the best way possible. Right? Here's my question. When an enemy, a real attack, comes into our life right now, do you want someone who will hug you, or do you want John? 
right? I want that guy. I want a guy who makes puppies turn the other way. No offense, John, you a bad man. I'm sure you got a big heart. I look forward to getting to know you better. But anyway, like, see, this is the picture that we've got to get when Jesus says that, that it is peace that comes when God declares through the pen of Paul that it is his peace that comes to guard our hearts. It's not just warm and fuzzy. It means when worry tries to drift to anxiety and to attack your heart, your soul, and your mind, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding stands as a watchman on a tower and says, you don't get to come here. You need to stand down. Stand down. And some of you need to get your hearts and minds around that this morning. Because anxiety has had a full-on attack for far too long, and Jesus is bigger. The Prince of Peace is greater. That's the hope that we have and the invitation to you this morning. If you say, Nate, it's too weighty. Cast all your cares on him. Cast all that anxiety. Cast all of that Torn, divided self at the feet of Jesus. The rest of that verse says, because he cares for you. This morning, it is not trite. It it is not some statement offered up to just wipe it all away. But you need to know that the power of God is that great. He wants to set you free from the weight of the crippling bondage of that anxiety. Now, some of that healing may come through tools like we've offered in that resource guide. It may come through community in a small group. It may come through a therapist or a counselor. It it, it may come through an array of different resources. But you've got to come to the place where you say, I get it. Life is more. Eternity is more. I'm worth more. Eternity is worth more. I'm worth more. You've got to come to that place where you're able to say, God has something better for me than the cost of this anxiety. And so this morning, that's how I want to pray for you. That's how I want to pray for our whole church family here online. That today would be the day that you would take him up on this offer. For some of you, today might be the day that you take him up on this offer for the first time. That you've never come before. The God of the universe, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for you, you've never come before him and said, I want to surrender my whole self to you. You can do that today. And you can experience freedom from that crippling anxiety. Father, we thank you this morning. And Lord, I pray for my own heart and mind. I pray for the heart and mind of every person gathered and here joining us online that we would cast all our cares on you. That we would walk in the confidence that yes, life is more. I'm worth more. The cost of anxiety is too great and you have something better. Let us fix our eyes on you and your kingdom for your glory, for our good, and for the good of others. We thank you. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. We love you. I do remind you, take advantage of that resource guide, whether you pick up a paper one or go online, but know that we're praying for you this week. God bless. Have a good one.